we're on. Okay, so it's kind of noisy here. We apologise for the sound, but I've got Patrick with me, and Patrick, myself and Patrick have been catching up over the last couple of days. Patrick, how's it going in the US? And perhaps do uh, you have an indication as to what's kind of getting you excited at all? Right, it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, the most exciting piece is being able to bring the first and only verified graphene producer into the United States and present those into existing clients, customer bases we've built up over the last 30 years now that I believe the, the process is ready. I think I've made the statement before that I believe that Versarian actually answers and brings the answers to the questions that have been asked, so that's very exciting. I mean, we've had a pretty busy couple of days. I only came in yesterday. You and Matt were already here. We didn't stop until 10 o'clock last night. We were up for breakfast this morning. You managed to slide in a few more meetings this morning. <laughs> now we've got a full day. We've got more meetings this afternoon. Um, you know, is that kind of what we can expect? You're the kind of VRS <laughs> dynamo at the moment. You know, you're killing me in terms of the amount of uh, communications going back and forwards. But if you were to choose one single thing which, uh, which kind of separated us from maybe some of the other things that you've been involved in in the past, what would you say it was? Yeah, it's the breadth of product offering and the global exposure. The key here is you're working with a number of companies that reach into multinational markets and different spaces, and, and they're not always the same space within that market. So, uh, you know, it's very exciting to be part of Versarian that can bring the technology and the breadth across and the investment. And I think one of the keys is the shareholders. The shareholders with this company are absolutely fantastic. The interactions that I have had have been both, you know, uh, energizing and entertaining, I, I must say. Well, you know, I think you all keep me on my toes, but, uh, you know, one of the questions that came up, I'm just looking at my phone now, but it came in from Twitter is, you've obviously hit the ground running. We've mentioned some of the collaborations that we're involved in. What kind of stage are they at? You know, how are they progressing? Right, so you have different stages of these collaborations. We have collaborations that we've brought over from work that's already been in process and the work that I've had with uh, those 20 or 30 years of experience in nanotechnology. And then we have some the people that just have inquiries. And so I believe based on some of the things aligning in the correct manner, in the correct order, that we have some opportunities that could be quicker than others. And, and I see these being able to be, and that's one of the reasons that we're laying the ground in the supply chain initiatives and some of the collaborations on that end, so that we can prepare ourselves when those uh, opportunities then get qualified and turn into orders. I mean, one of the questions here was from uh, Tom Walton, who says, uh, you know, are you surprised how long it takes? I mean, I think we're doing fantastic. I mean, <laughs> the progress of bringing a brand new science, you know, into a, a established industries, getting them to start thinking about using our materials in different ways. Um, I mean, would you say that we've taken that time? No, absolutely not. I, I put a, a tweet out about this some weeks ago that, you know, just two years ago, two to three years ago, the average in this industry for nanotechnology in general was approximately 61 months from introduction to some form of commercialization. And I think what we've done and we've been able to do is leverage some of these relationships and opportunities to reduce that significantly. So uh, I think that a lot of people will be surprised about some of the things that are, are around the corner and the way that we're moving forward and, and the structure key, right? This is infrastructure. So the way that uh, you, Neil, and, and Matt, and all of the people within Versarian have started to lay that foundation so that we don't get ahead of ourselves. And that's the key. You have to have that structure in there because some of these large multinational companies are going to require that. Here's another key. What we're working on is an opportunity that creates linkage and leverages deeply inside these companies that will not be easily offset. So you have to understand that with everybody that's playing in this market, the key is being able to get in there correctly and get in there solid so that when you be attacked by competitors, there's a deep well, linkage. That's why we have this process. You know, this Absolutely. process all built around a friendship and a partnership and a collaboration approach. So we get the NDA in place, we start to talk more openly, we get the collaboration in place, which defines how we're going to work. Once we've got the collaboration in place, then we go into testing. Testing goes all around in it's very rarely that it's in a straight line. That's correct. Most of our customers, in fact, I can't think of a customer who hasn't expanded the breadth of what they want us to do. Most customers are not looking for us just to supply powder into a single uh, opportunity, they're looking at how they can use all of our products and all of their products, which means that we're kind of over overwhelmed most of the time. Uh, and then once we get through the testing, then we're into the, the actual uh, hard work, which is actually meeting their demands. That's and correct. One of the questions on here is, you know, what are we, what are we doing in the Senate building? Why are we developing these links? Right. And, and for us, it's all about getting uh, the lobbyists like the National Graphene Association, like Ed Meek, like uh, 
Senator Wicker to actually understand what we're trying to achieve here. The meeting we have this morning was all about collaboration, was all about developing the supply chain. Right. And that's going to be the next big uh, question. Is yeah. How do we fund this and how do we actually create that volume of material that is required? And what we've tried to do with the, the BIG team, China deal, is to form a template that can be rolled out across Korea, across North America. And so that's going to be absolutely key to what happens in the next uh, in, the, in the next phase of the series of Once we've got the China deal, and uh, what I'm going to suggest is that, uh, as I explained earlier, that myself and Matt hold a private lunch where we will uh, go through that and our house in detail, because I'm not sure that everybody's picked up all of the detail that's in there. Uh, and we'll, we'll get um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get TMS to set that up in the next uh, in the next few weeks, uh, and uh, then we can go through that. We can explain that deal in, in, uh, in layman's terms and in, in the detail that's required. Anyway, Patrick, I'd like to thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you did a great you. job. Thank you for the I wish you could slow down a little bit. And, uh, I can catch my breath, <laughs> but uh, we're at, we've had a good couple of and days. Thanks to Matt behind the scenes here uh, helping us out. He's been fantastic. I've learned so much from this guy. All the accolades that you've given Matt have been absolutely correct on. Stephen, thank you for your help back in the UK and, and all of the folks on the team.